Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program and Keith's Froggy Waiter, the mining base that we've not really been at for a while because we've been off like with the biome bouncer jutting around and then bringing the spirit of defiance here to fix the big brother up in the sky and come over. And uh, one thing that I uh, have done that I've not shown on camera is that I've transferred all the broken solar panels off of the science facilities. Uh, you'll see the nice long ones all stuck up there. Those are the ones that Jebediah brought with him on the Spirit of Defiance. And we just transferred those all across. It was literally just a Kerbal jumping from one ship to the other and back again with things on his back. Nothing really all that interesting to see there. Alright, so what we're doing at the moment is we are preparing for Jeb's final mission on Minmus. Uh, before he officially hands over the Spirit of, Devi the Spirit of Defiance to Kirk um, for all the science. Uh, we, we see this as like the last factory test, if you will. Um, now, what are we going to go do? Well, what we're going to do is jump across um, jump across space and time to go look at something. With the wonders of post-editing, that something is the uh, the big the big brother here. Now, what we're trying to do is just have a look at his um, his anomaly map. Um, you'll, you'll notice that just north of where Big Brother is flying right now, uh, and indeed on the bottom left there you can see uh, my, my base, uh, yeah, just below where he's going now is an anomaly, which I think we need to go check out. Don't you, don't you think we need to go check out? Yeah, of course we need to go check that out. So, for services rendered, we're going to be sending uh, Jebediah out this time, as he did, like, all the important work of going out to the Big Brother, like, getting this, this secondary ship up here, just generally doing everything that was important. Jeb gets to uh, fly the maiden voyage. Also, it kind of tests out the vehicle before handing it over to the mining crew, um, who, as we all know, aren't the most competent bunch of individuals. So, Jeb's going to unlink... Well, I thought he was going to unlink. No, he's going to retract the panels. Uh, and then we're going to unlink and we're going to turn ourselves around so that we can look in, like, the right direction. Because the last thing we want to do is uh, set off in the wrong direction with, you know, such an important mission going on. Uh, Jeb getting out to stretch his legs. So that's where I was uh, considering whether to actually send um, Kirk instead of Jeb. But I was like, ah, oh, this is going to involve taking people out of one ship, putting them in another. I like at that. That's it's not difficult, but it's time consuming. And all I want to do is just like get going. I've I've done lots of time, like literally, uh, like just just before I started recording this bit, I'd done lots of like time consuming bits, like, letting the time run so that all my fuel tanks would fill up from the key thing. Like that's just a small small little conver converter unit there. I haven't managed to unlock any of the bigger stuff, so um, yeah, we're kind of stuck with it for the moment. Uh, anyway, right, so we've done like the world's worst three point turn, uh, and I suppose it is the world's worst because we are out on Minmus and no other three point turns have been done yet, so yeah, that, that, that's alright. Um, and we're gonna point ourselves around to um, try and intersect that anomaly. Now, I know it is roughly in the sort of north by northwest direction. Um, uh, now, my biggest worry is not getting this starting bit right, because if I don't point in the right direction, then we're going to be, like, chugging around for hours on end trying to find the right point. Uh, which, as you will see, is pretty much what we do anyway. Um, but it would have been a lot better if I'd got this bit bang on first time. Um, but... As I said in a previous episode, it's hard to do the, the right thing first time authoritatively with like minimal fuel loss when you're just kind of doing it by human eye. Um, if I could set up like a whole set of uh, computerized maneuver nodes that would follow exactly what I said specifically, you know, kind of like mech Jeb, uh, we wouldn't have any of these issues. But then I wouldn't feel like I was playing the game at that point. I'd feel like I was just telling the computer to do it for me. Um, which I wonder if the rover drivers feel like that because of that that 15 minutes like difference. Do you think they're like, oh, I really wish I could get out there and drive it myself instead of having this buffer of space time between us? Hmm, interesting food for thought there. Right, so we're about halfway over um, our arc and everything's looking all right. Um, it's a bit hard to tell exactly where I'm supposed to go because they show you a picture, not like a pinpoint on the map. It's like, this anomaly is at this star. And that's great, the star covers up like, I don't know, three square kilometers. How am I, how am I supposed to find out? Right, uh, following my, my standard uh, approach vector, which is overshooting it a little bit so that when I'm, when I'm going over the top of it, I'm not just like slamming into the floor because I put myself at that exact point there. Uh, and we're going to start like 
scoping round. Uh, I'm, I think I'm going to uh, stop on top of that hill over there. Uh, so we can have a, a good proper look around and see what's going on. Because um, I don't know what anomaly we're looking for here. All I know is that we're looking for an anomaly. Um, now, I, I have since found out that if I looked at the wiki, I could have found out exactly what anomaly that was. But that's not why I'm playing this game. For the, like, I'm playing the exploration game on this one, not, not that I went and did it because the wiki told me to. Um, which is a bit weird. Uh, if any of you have been following my Minecraft exploits, you'll know that it's all about reading the wiki first. So, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a change of pace. Anyway, we're coming in really close to the land now. Um, I have no idea how, how close we actually are, but I have a feeling my... My shadow is probably going to be uh, on the floor somewhere. Look, there it is. You just saw it on the bottom of the, the screen there. Um, and as we all know, when you can see a shadow, you've really got to start worrying about where the land is, uh, that you're not going to plow face first into it. Which, thankfully, I am reasonably confident that I'm not going to. And when I, like, mm, maybe not so, I do little little burns like this just to, just to give myself that extra edge of confidence. Um, so right now, I am actually going to try and completely stop. I was going to be like, hey, let's just, like, cruise on over this hill. But then I did this and looked at the map and went, oh, dear, I've completely overshot. I should probably stop um, and, and try and get some sort of, like, bearings on where I'm going because um, we all know bearings make things go smoother. Now, of course, uh, as soon as I've stopped my forward velocity, suddenly the, my, my downwards velocity becomes very much more uh, something to worry about. But it's all right. I need to go over towards those flat plains, as this look at the map tells me. Um, I then spend a little bit of time mucking around with different views to see if I can get a better one, but believe me, that is the best view, that, that little projection there. Um, and we're going to just kind of drift on over. I'm caning my, my um, RCS to pushing me up because I don't want to gain extra speed. If, if I'm gaining extra speed, that means I've got to lose speed at some point. Oh, uh, I, Occasionally, I had little mo moments of panic where I was a little bit close to the floor and so had to um, suddenly drop in my, my, my rocket engines. Um, but that's all right. You know, that's all part of space travel. I, I've seen the plateau I'm headed for now, that one just over there. Uh, and it's time to think about uh, slowing myself down. Now, for some reason, I decided that the best way to do this is RCS fuel. Uh, now, it's taken rocket fuel to get up to these um, th these velocities, so it's going to take rocket fuel to get back down again. Uh, and you can see an absolute moment of panic there when I keep hitting the wrong button and sending myself inside. Um, but that's all right. Jeb knows what he's doing. He's going to slam the ship sideways into the floor to obviously make him break. And there we go. Jeb unorthodox as always gets the job done and that's why we hate him right it's reorientation time we're gonna have a look around see where we are and see where we're going um, now I don't know about you guys but that's a very small blur on my map it's always been a very small blur on my map but I think I gathered from it that I need to go southward somewhere so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna like bust our way over to that ridge over there I, I'm sorry, we're not we're not gonna watch all this. Um, we're, we're just gonna fly, and then we'll come down like on the other side with me breaking with RCS. Which is a little bit silly because this whole time that I'm breaking with RCS, if I had just put the brakes on, I probably could have stopped myself a lot quicker. But no, for some reason I'm still in spaceship mode, so I'm not I'm not thinking. Oh, this is a car with wheels on the floor. I'm like, hey, this is a hovercraft or something like that, where I've got to use puffs of air to control myself. Um, I suppose that is Jeb's fault. I mean, he is a rocketeer after all. If I had sent a, ro uh, a, a sports car driver, maybe they would have been a little bit more more apt at the job that they found themselves uh, in the position of doing. All right, so I've decided that after looking at the map again, obviously there was a lot of looking at the map of this. I was like, hmm, uh, I can see more of the bottom half of that logo. So obviously we've got to go north or I can see more of the top half. So we've got to go south. And just a lot of like, experimentation and trial and error um yeah it's led me to, to to go in this way and it turns out even this is is, is not the correct route um it, oh that was brilliant uh, so the whole time we've been talking about how i should have put the brakes on on this route my brakes were on and then i was fighting them the entire entire route of the way which, which is amazing but anyway we've got a little bit of a hill climb to do now this isn't of course pike's peak um th th this is just a nice smooth hill going upwards we're not trying to race up the best po possible way but at the same time i am very bored at this point i've been cruising around on minmus for 
20 minutes according to the the the, the mission clock up there uh, and look we're so bored we're going for cinematic shots isn't that cute isn't that lovely so cute and lovely that my brain has just gone into anaphylactic shock or something so we're going to jump forwards to this breaking um scenario here uh where we're going to turn around and go northwards because that's what the map told me it's over that way somewhere and indeed with a little bit more thrusting uh we come to this scenario where i'm like right i need to have a look around we're close enough on the map for it to be a little bit well it's been a little bit hard to tell where we are anyway but it's been even more difficult to tell which one's me and which one's the thing and there it is we're looking for a monolith it turns out and i'm going ever so slightly to the left of it so if we're gonna uh make a little like thrusting control burn now and we're just gonna just gonna cruise cruise at this speed um we, we could do with a little bit more Let, let's let's throttle on a bit of um uh what are they called rocket power um but beware However much rocket power we put on, we need to counteract with brakes and RCS fuel uh, at the end of that, which, uh, you know, can be a bit awkward. Uh, what I really should do at that is um, kick the back end of my ship down to push myself up into space, as I've got quite good at doing after these long, long hauls like this. So if you bounce along, it, it's quite fun. But yeah, you kick yourself up, turn yourself completely 180 around, and then and then hit on your, your rockets. That would probably make a bit more sense. That is a new technique that I have just thought of whilst uh, speaking to you here. So we're going to have to uh, put that into practice. Uh, it's not going to be until the end of all these science gathering videos now, I'm afraid, because I've already recorded all them. Right, so we put ourselves down to a dead stop because over there is where we're headed and we're not headed towards it. So um, if we take our brakes off and, and just thrust over in that direction again, get the, f get the chase cam on the go. Um, chase cam always a little bit disorientating because as you can tell from my artificial horizon at the bottom, that horizon is not flat, but it looks flat on my screen because we're relative to the vessel, not relative to the nav ball. Um, yeah, you know, it's all about the situ what situation you're in as to which one you use. But right, there we go. The sign in front of me. Hey, it's it's almost as if we've never seen one of these before. Uh, and in fact, I think on this series, we've not actually been to any of the Kerbin anomalies. So I might put a big brother in orbit around Kerbin and then we can go do an anomaly drop thing. We'll just go and check them all out at some point. Yeah, that sounds fun. Right, so we're going to get Kirk. No, it's not Kirk. We're going to get Jeb out of the vessel. Um, and of course we need to put the ladder out first because you know Minmus can't just like jump around out here can you? <laughs> um, and we're gonna go get some science hopefully. Uh, well we're gonna go see if we can get some science or whether it's uh, um, whether it's already got. So th there we go. So for sample from Minmus slopes. We want all this stuff because last time I was doing slope science I completely forgot to do the surface sample which is something I do a lot, um, as you will find out. Uh, so we're going to have to go for uh, a, a snappy screenshot here. Uh, this should actually be my thumbnail, so you'd have seen this. Um, and then on the process of getting Jeb back to the vessel, um, something horrific happens. Um, yeah, that, that, that's right. Kerbal crashes. Uh, mm, great, hey? Right, so after clicking through the barrage of um, all the alarms that I'd forgot to turn off when they told me that they were done and I just like jumped to the ship and then delete, the, delete them all right there, we're going to go straight to the Spirit of Resilience. Now, I have no idea, like post-recording, whether I've done the EVA or surface sample at this point here. And I have no idea whether I'm going to check like either check it out or what but one thing i am going to do is i'm going to plant a flag this time uh so according to that menu there no i have not done them yet uh, and we're gonna have to see if i notice that in game but anyway we're gonna call this the black mamba and i'm really not talking about the type of snake um so with that oh so subtle reference there uh indeed we're gonna fly jeb back to the ship and take him home um so note for future self Go and do the science in the slopes biome again. My base is just by one, so that, that can't be too difficult. Anyway, we're going to point ourselves roughly at the uh, at the, the velocity, like the, the this way is base marker, the pink one, and just boost. Boost for all we're worth until our map tells us that we're going to make it to the other side. Well, it's not the other side, so we make it just over the horizon. As you can tell from that little map view, I wasn't going to even get close before I smashed into the... Uh, the the, the hill in front of me 
And I reckon somewhere about there would probably be good enough. Nope, maybe not. So whilst watching the map view, we're just going to uh, give ourselves a little bit of a push, aiming ever so slightly um, like round the spin of uh, uh, of our orbit here, because obviously um, as we are flying in the in the air, the base will be spinning on Minmus, and whilst we're flying, everything's spinning underneath us, and it all gets very confusing. Though I do notice that my orbit is uh, well, no, my my nav ball is on um, surface relative, so it should have gone round with him at the same time. Uh, maybe, maybe not. I, I'll have to do some uh, testing for that to see whether it happens. So anyway, we're coming in uh, pretty, pretty hard at the moment. We're about 2.3 kilometers away, uh, which means we've got to wait for the low judder to kick in. And somewhere about here, I will start like just caning my, caning my speed. We, we just want to stop and then be dropping vertically down just like that i mean literally my horizontal velocity is 0 0.4 meters per second which i know like when you get two things in orbit close to each other is fucking terrifying but when we're on a planet like this that that's not that that fast at all so we now have to endure the the plummet oh uh, descent i i i hate descent I ate it? Yeah, I ate it. As I have said many times now, it is quite possibly the most boring part of the game. You are just floating along at a handful of seconds per meter. Uh, seconds per meter? Meters per second. Um, and, and you don't want to go very much faster because if you judge it wrong, you slam into the floor at that speed. Uh, which is obviously not what you want. So you take it slow and drift down like a leaf on the wind. And uh, I don't know if you've ever watched Leaves on Winds, but th that's actually quite quite boring after the first, oh, look at that. But anyway, we're close enough now for our shadow to be spotted. So uh, we must start to think about like trying to know our, our, our downwards velocity. I think we're going slow enough at the moment just to use RCS. Um, I, I, yeah, we're not definitely not falling fast enough to need the rockets to keep us... Uh, from smashing into the floor. Though I'm going to use them anyway. Uh, waste not, want not. We brought all this power with us. Let, let's use it. As after all, we can like top up our engines at a point not 200 meters away from us. So Jeb's coming in for a very gentle touchdown at the moment. We are making contact at the floor with 2.2 downward meters per second, which is quite nice. Um, and now, well, I'm going to call that mission a success, guys. All I need to do is go back and refill, like I said. So, thank you very much for this anomaly hunting mission. I will see you guys next time, where we're going to hand over to Kirk and do the actual science hunting. Bye!